Pandu has a condition from birth called schizencephaly, where portions of his brain are not completely developed and they've been that way since birth, and his birth parents both knew that when his biological mom was pregnant with him. When Andrew was born, he was placed into foster care at our neighbor's house, and that's how we met him. It didn't take long for him to kind of grow on me, and we were told that he would be nonverbal and non-mobile, which he is, that he would have non-stop seizures. They're pretty controlled right now. That he would be likely blind, he's not deaf, he's not um, cognitively impaired, he's definitely not. Basically, we were told that um, he wouldn't amount to much, and we probably didn't want to go that way. But they were wrong, and we did want to go that way. So we're so happy that we did. You know, after we get him dressed and everything, we usually end up going to therapy, and we spend about five hours at therapy, two to three days a week. Well, when we found out that Andrew was going to have a wish, we thought about his likes and the things he was interested in, and we gave him five different choices. So Andrew uh, wished for, amazingly enough, a opportunity to become a Coast Guard rescue swimmer, and specifically in Kodiak, Alaska. There were so many people there to meet us off the plane that when we first walked in, I think he was a little bit overwhelmed, but it certainly didn't take Andrew long to really warm up to everybody. When we walked into our room, it was completely decorated. He was so excited to see the pictures and all of the things that were there. The next day, it started out with the pool, and he loves the water. He just did not want to stop. He kept asking for more laps and more laps. The biggest thing, of course, was the rescue. He was so excited to get on that helicopter and fly away. I fully expected him to get around around the aircraft and be in the water, but certainly not the rescue part of it. That was well above and beyond what I would have thought. It wasn't like he flew up in the air, they flew around and he laid back down. He was gone for an hour and 15 minutes and went like eight miles off the ocean. Over's going down. Good job, Andrew. Keep those cons up. Four minutes forever outside cabin door. There he is, Andrew. And then when he came back, everybody was there, and there was you know, a big reception for him and a retirement ceremony. <laughs> that was amazing that Tom would actually hold off his retirement so that Andrew could be part of that ceremony. That was so special. Culturally, they actually pass their fins to the brand new rescue swimmer that comes to their installation straight out of school. So for Tom, after 30 years of being a rescue swimmer, giving Andrew his fins, it's pretty amazing. He's very excited about what he did. He has a lot of pride in the things he's able to do. And thinking back on it, he just gets very, very excited. So it's really helped his emotional health. As I've noticed since he's been in the water and done some of the things with the team, he's a lot more mobile and agile and a little more endurant than in the past. And he actually, I think, pushes himself a little harder. I think he knows what he can do and, and drives him a little bit more. We took inspiration from what I saw in the videos and the rolling out of helicopters. We do that for a lot of trunk control and jumping. And we keep, keep telling him, you know, Cody's gonna be real proud of you, or Patrick's gonna be real proud of you, and he likes that. He likes to know that people are cheering for him and that he's gonna make them proud for what he's doing. I think wishes are important because it gives people hope. It gives people excitement, it gives people something new, and gives people just a sense of normalcy. It helps families come together to be families and kids to be kids, even just for a moment. The first thing that kind of blew my mind away is probably the authority that it took to put a disabled child inside of an aircraft when it wasn't a real event. I actually took approval from the Commandant of the Coast Guard, and that's the highest person in the Coast Guard in Washington, D.C. That's probably the biggest thing that kind of blows my mind. It's one thing about learning about the equipment and in and out of the aircraft, but actually going on a flight and you know, actually doing a rescue mission without their parents. You know, I, I know from doing rescue work myself, outside of somebody truly being hurt, that's almost unheard of. Knowing how many people are involved in Make-A-Wish to make one child's wish come true, it's just phenomenal. You're taking a child that was given a rough road in life and you're letting them know how many people care about them. 
the fact that that many people cared enough about my son is it's just overwhelming. There really aren't words for that. I think I want people to learn from Andrew that life is full of joy. And despite your circumstances and despite the things that you were given from birth or even later on in life, there's always joy to be found and you should chase after it. And I don't want him to see his disabilities as inabilities. It's just an obstacle and you can still have your dreams come true. They might look different and it might not be something that you can carry on throughout your entire life. I mean, he's not going to be a rescue swimmer as an adult, but he, you know, he is now. And how cool is that? <laughs>